Hello people, this is our Cobra, and this is Let's Play Valkyria Chronicles Blind. Last time, the city of... The city of Brule was invaded by the Empire, a group of jerkass fascists in, you know, with tanks and armor and all the good stuff. Um, so we had to flee from them, but now we have a tank ourselves. So yeah. Let's get to get started and see what this is all about. In March of 1935, the Empire began its invasion across Gallia's eastern border. Yes. Maximilian, commander of the Gallian invasion front, built his army around mobile armor. Girlendio and the other fortresses along the border fell to his tanks in quick succession. And then he invaded the northern parts. I can take it from the map. Bruel's fall in under two hours was typical of villages in the Empire's path, and the road to the capital bore a steady flow of refugees. Right, so it looked like they're already inside, like... Randgris, Gallia's capital. A town secure and stable since ancient times. Within its walls stood the castle Randgris, and within its unicorn spire resided Cordelia, Gallia's princess. Well, okay, it's great they have a princess. How about an actual queen and qu king and queen, you know, the actual government? Supporting Gallia's policy of neutrality was a system of universal conscription Under it, all schools required military training each year. In the event of a war, citizens were then drafted into the militia to defend their country. Hmm. Must be a pretty large As the conflict with the East grew worse, both Welkin and Alicia found themselves no exceptions to that fate. Hmm. It means the Empire's gained an advantage in the early start of what would have sort of lightning, unexpected lightning raids. But Gallia itself can apparently employ a large part of their population as soldiers, for if that was true. So these are my new digs. Oh, my uniform. I should get changed before reporting in. Better get ready now. <laughs> Flares, binoculars, a compass, and a map. I I'm sorry, that hat there, are you serious? <laughs> that fucking hat! <laughs> oh god, that hat! Everything else fine, but that hat! Oh my god, you don't look like you're about to motor off into war, you look like you should be serving me sandwiches on my, on my plane. You look like you should be taking my suitcase after I step out of the car while I go into the fancy hotel, my god! Are you here to show me to my assigned cinema seat, sir? <laughs> Everything you need for a nice hike. Or combat. <laughs> oh my god, that hat. Why is that Welcome? hat a thing? Can I come in? Yes, but I'm wearing a silly hat. Sure, it's open. Oh, you're already changed too. Let's see. Uh, seems like we don't saddle the female with uh, any silly hats. Not bad, not bad. You look good, actually. You look fucking ridiculous with that hat. So, how about me? Do I look alright in this? Convincing? Convincing of what? Let's take a look. <laughs> Hello there, sailor! <laughs> yeah, you look fine. You wear it like a pro. <laughs> really? You're not just saying that? Of course not. You look tough. I like it. Well, maybe that's not the use of word I'd use. Oh, good. I was worried it looked kind of silly. No way! That plating on the back? It's like a coleopterid exoskeleton. Beetle-tastic! Coleo what? And did you just say beetle? Beetles are a very beautiful species of insect. Uh, Welkin? What kind of girl wants to hear that she looks like a bug? Don't be down on bugs. Bugs can be quite beautiful, I'll have you know. 
Huh? Not just any bug. A rhinoceros beetle, king of the insects. Who wouldn't want that? Uh-huh. I guess I'll just try to take that as a very Welkin sort of compliment. Yeah, well, maybe you should show some appreciation for beetles, young lady. They are very fascinating, you know, branch of organisms, I'll have you know. Tell me about that scarf. You've been wearing it since I met you. Oh, this? It's part of my uniform from the bakery. And now you're going to keep it for warfare? Oh, okay, just remember to bring bread. Is that right? I don't want to forget the time I spent busting my buns baking. I'm probably busting your buns, baking buns, I take it. I plan to keep wearing it until I can get back to manning the ovens again. Don't they have regulation against this sort of thing in the military? That's great. <laughs> Once you do, I'll be first in line to get some of that bread. Mmm, can't get enough of that bread. Nice, delicious, nondescript bread. Is that a promise? Well, I'll be sure to have plenty of it ready and waiting for you. Yes, she'll have her buns warmed up for you when you come over. Absolutely. Bread! Hey, if you're ready, we should probably go see the captain now. You know, she's probably also wearing a hood to get out of wearing that st a stupid hat. Squad 7 is born. Dramatic. <clears throat> Come in. Excuse me, ma'am. Galleon Militia Enlistee, Welkin Gunther. Reporting for duty. Ma'am. Oh. Galleon Militia Enlistee, Alicia Melchiot. Also reporting for duty. And refusing to I'm look Captain at you. Captain Eleanor Verratt. Commander of this regiment. Gunther, you're promoted to lieutenant. You'll be leader of Squad 7 now. Why? Ma'am. Enlistee Melchiot, you're promoted to sergeant. You'll be under the lieutenant's command. Understood? Why? What exactly have they... you know? It is you. What? Nice coincidence, huh, Welkin? What have they done to earn you... that? I had no idea that you'd enlisted. Yep. Now that there's a real war going on, I joined up. Seriously, he's the only one who has to wear the silly hats. are here just like you. You know each other. Yes, ma'am. We knew each other at university. Welcome was in science, and I was in archaeology. And just look at us now. No archaeology or science. Looks like the two of us are studying more, I guess. Looks that way. It's good to see you. And you. Why is That'll he... be all for now. There's a strategy briefing later today. But you still have time. Time for you to catch up. You'll be spending a lot of time on the post and in Randbreeze. They'll be your new home. So get to know them. That's... That'll be all. Report back in time for the briefing. Yes. Uh, Until then, you're dismissed. Why did they get promoted to top rank? I mean, what exactly have they done to earn the distinction of getting to be in command? I mean, especially Welkin, who so far has mostly just been taking order. I mean, he's a good shot, but that just makes him well suited for, you know, operating in the field, not necessarily for the task of command. Heck, uh, I can't remember her name. Uh, Red Riding Hood, as I often call her has done more to actually make plans and operate. I mean, I guess I could see her being command, but would her basically be, you know, commanding the bumpkin squadron of, uh, of the place? But that's it, really. I, it just seems kind of like, you know, there'll be more qualified people. Welcome, Alicia. Rosie, Brigitte, Stark, Shop Trooper, Largo, Pada, Lance. Why is she called Rosie? Okay. Um, I have no idea what any of this is. It's good to see you doing the rounds. Welcome. I'm mostly just wandering around all confused like. This is the command room. Use it to structure your squad. You will have access to both drafted and volunteer recruits. Now that I think of it, Squad 7 is still short on soldiers, isn't it? I'll explain how this works. This is the master list. The recruits have all been assigned classes based on their talents. I should probably touch on the five classes, just so we're clear. That's probably good. 
First off, you have the scouts. Just like the name suggests, they'll be your eyes. Their best asset is their mobility. They can go out, collect intel, then make it back safely. What you'll notice, everything the Imperial Scouts did not do. So, yeah, shitty ass scouts. That, and a keen eye for enemies. A good scout can spot a man in tall grass from a hundred yards. That comes at the price of firepower. Their job is spotting enemies, not taking them out. Something the Empire Scouts probably forgot. Next up, the Shock Trooper. They're the ones to break through enemy lines and clean up. Yeah, we got a taste of that last time. They offer excellent offense and defense. As far as combat goes, they're as good as it gets. While they lack any specialized techniques, they also don't have any obvious shortcomings. All rounder combat troops, gotcha. Think of them as the least finicky unit in your squad, Lieutenant. After them, we have Lancers, then anti-tank units. They're critical when facing armored targets. What's up with that weapon? Their purpose is pretty self-explanatory. In most cases, they're the only way to stop a tank. They're also well shielded from explosives, which conveniently includes tank mortars. Very conveniently. Sadly, they're slow and weak to gunfire. Their limited ammo could also be called a drawback. Changing gears, we have the engineers. They handle supplies and perform combat support. They can restock other units' ammunitions, treat the wounded, even repair tanks on site. They can place sandbags for cover, disarm mines, repair towers, you name it. Their actual combat skills are very low. Think of them as combat facilitators. Support unit, got it. Lastly, we have the snipers. They can shoot down targets from a considerable distance. You won't find better soldiers for marksmanship and range. They can hit targets I can barely see. Sniping rifles also come with scopes that work to augment a sniper's natural eyesight. Drawbacks include low mobility and defense. If the enemy gets them alone, they're done for. That should cover the basics. Go ahead and put a squad together now. There's room for 20, and you can swap units at any time. Okay. Okay, so they're sold by occupation. My God. Oh. I'm Nancy DeFore. It's so good to meet you. Well, you don't seem to have any obvious weaknesses, like being allergic to metal.
Well, we have two scouts now. Let's see if we can get some people from the other category. Let's try to... We don't like land, so so we'll attack us land. How does that make sense? This is a lot of info to take in. Hang on a second, I better off screen this. 